All work and no play makes Jack a dull boy, apparently. Good for me, my name isn't Jack, it's MAFT UK and this afternoon when I finish work I'm going to go on top of Weatherlum and I'm going to spend the next 24 up hours up there enjoying myself, relaxing after a hectic day at work. Welcome. That's checkpoint one done. Um, we've crossed the gorge now. We're just going to a slight double back, and then we take up the steel edge. I think it's called the steel edge. If it's not, I'll put it down somewhere else. Um, it's just starting to rain. I don't, this rain's not going to hang in there long, but um, I'll have to put the camera away for a little while, and then we'll get up onto the edge, and then we'll walk up and see until we start to see things. When I got a view to show you, I'll get the camera out again and show you. But in the meantime, let's keep going. Well, it's been a long time since I've said this, but that is a fantastic view. I'm looking out towards Yorkshire. I can see Ingleborough, the flat top of Ingleborough, is it Pennygent? <laughs> uh, but I'm probably, if I look hard enough, I could probably see Ingleborough, Wernside and Pennygent. If I turn around this way, I'm not going to focus in just now. But in the very far distance there, I can also see Haitian Power Station. And at night, it wouldn't surprise me if I could see Blackpool Tower as well. What an awesome valley. What an awesome hill. It peaks itself right on the edge of the Lake District and you get to see right across into Yorkshire. Tremendous view. One of the best I've seen for years. Absolutely fantastic. Okay, this is checkpoint two. Uh, checkpoint one is there, the river crossing. And you can't see it, but I've come up this knuckle or blade, steel blade, whatever they call it. Whew. Yeah, this knuckle, I think what I'll do is have a few jelly babies and a drink to get me up that bit. Nothing wrong with putting a bit of sugar, a bit of energy back into you. Awesome view. I wish you could see it the way I could see it. Got Windermere down there now. You can see Ambleside. Yeah, that's Windermere, that's Ambleside. Okay, I'll save that little bit for the top. Special treat. Do it in stages. Give yourself treats at certain stages. Give yourself checkpoints. Work to those checkpoints, work to your treats. Psychological games, it works, it does work. If you just look at the top of the hill and go, ah, and you ain't gonna get there. So give yourself, do it in stages. Go at your own pace. I'm, that's why I'm not with anybody, because I can go at my own pace. I'm not pushing too hard and I'm not gonna hurt myself. I'm not gonna fall or do something because I'm, I'm putting myself under too much duress. My route card is at home. I gave that to my wife two days ago because I knew which way I was going to go. So she knows where I am at any given point. I know what time I'm gonna get on top of that hill. And if I'm an hour behind schedule, it doesn't make any difference because I'm, nobody's going to be there. Work in stages, give yourself treats. It's good for morale. And your body will thank you too. This next bit is called the steel blade. It is hand over hand and it is not good at all. If you slip here, you're in serious trouble. You are going to get hurt. So be mindful of that if you, or should you, choose this route for the future. And here we are, checkpoint three. And oh my goodness, what a view. 
behind me here it's Coniston just over in the distance there just got that hill to go up there blind summit so that's not the top just keep going but absolutely fantastic shame it's a little bit hazy but there you go but there's my third checkpoint I'll have a little drink here as I say checkpoints challenges step by step time to move up to the next one next challenge up to the trig point I don't actually think there's a trig point it's just a spot height but let's get up there anyhow when I did my winter walk in the snow I stayed at the turn there up to the constant old man I'm about the same height as that now in the distance there you've got constant water over there is Morecambe I'm just in the cloud line now so this could I could disappear into the clouds any minute so it'd be a shame but there you go what a fantastic view I know you can't hear me right now because of the wind but here I am on the summit of Weatherloom I'm quite pleased about that I've never been on this summit before and I've been coming to the lakes since the early 90s I'll have to put subtitles in all I need to do now is find somewhere to pitch me tent <laughs> So let's find somewhere. Here yeah, we're down out of the wind now, coming to the valley. If I wanted to go to Coniston, old man, just follow that route up there. But that's lever water down there. Uh, I'm just going to follow this path, perhaps around to the edge, and then find a little place to pitch up, and hopefully have a nice view across the estuary for breakfast. After walking some miles. I've now found my place to camp tonight. This is where it's going to be. Look at this view. I guess it's an okay view. I'm actually at the quarry. Coniston down there in the valley. That's Coniston Lake. Coniston Old Man up there. What I've done, I've done a complete horseshoe. By the time I finish, it'd be quite a walk. And this wind's doing me head in. This is the actual view that I have this evening. Every try, every time I try and record, I uh, the wind picks up. So <laughs> tonight's tea. I'm having uh, that's fresh chicken with sweet and sour sauce and noodles so I'm going to fry that up in a minute in my MSR skillet, get that going my noodles are already on down there, it's really good 
notice the uh, gas canister I'm experimenting fraction of the price that gas canister it's not working too good though to be fair um, same screw valve but not working too good so probably won't do that again but got to try it fraction of the price of other gas all my spices and flavors I've already added so it's just a question of tipping it out of the bag and frying it add the sauce add the noodles boom tea is done So let me fill you in what I did. Left work, went up to Rutherlam, went across the back, kept going, kept going, kept going, dropped down into the saddle and came back round onto Lever's Water. Uh, and the dam's just behind me by about 50 metres and I've stopped on this little grassy knoll and uh, I can see the hostel down there and I can see everything down there so that, that's why I mean I was running out of places to stop really it was getting a bit uh, desperate if, if I hadn't there's not many other places I could go if I if, if I'd have uh, not been able to stop here and the tent's not perfect it's just about acceptable it's just about doable it's not perfect by any means but uh, it, I can sleep here, it'll be comfortable and uh, hopefully the uh, wind won't blow me off the top of the, this knoll <laughs> but it was a good walk and I must admit I am quite tired after that um, I didn't really anticipate walking so far today I was gonna go up to the top of the mountain and find somewhere to stop but the wind was too bad and despite this being a good tent I don't really want to put it under too much strain on purpose just to see if it works or not because it's a lot of money and I can't afford to buy another one and if this one breaks in the wind well I'm I'm back to uh, my Van Gogh's again and so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna put it at its limit first time out that would be crazy wouldn't it um yeah some of you will be thinking go on then what have you got water yeah, come on Matt, we know you. What have you got? Well, I got a little bit of nippy sweetie for my coffee. A bit of bourbon. Um, now then, pack weight. <clears throat> and there's people like uh, Steve, uh, Stephen Laidlaw. And uh, he... He gets his pack down to nine kilograms. Mine was 12 without the camera and, and tripod. All up, but that's also carrying two, two and a half liters of water. Uh, I wasn't quite sure how much I was gonna need, whether I was gonna actually, you know, swamp out. So, yeah. 12 kilos and that doesn't include the sticks either so probably 12 13 14 maybe 15 kilos maybe 15 kilos all up carrying that around how you do that with nine kilo I don't know because my tent is only was less than two so I don't know how you do that mate well done. You mustn't carry any water. I know you don't carry a lot. I know you don't because you usually filter it from the rivers, but yeah. Oh, and I got something to. Got something for Pikers. Pike Pikers TV. Philip, I've got something for you this evening too, so. <laughs> when it goes dark, see if we can spook the place up a bit. <laughs> Why not? We're in a old quarry. Why not see if we can muscle up some um, quarrymen during the evening, shall we?
Okay, right, I'm just about to tuck into my dinner and I hear some voices behind me. It's three people, uh, two fellas and uh, a lass. They've come all the way from Scarborough. Now, they asked me if they were on top of Coniston. I said, no, they're not. No, you're, you're just on a grassy knoll. Coniston is the big hill up there. And they went, ooh, eck. We've only got an hour of light left. Do you think it's okay if we went up it? I went, not, not the way you dressed. I said, you've got shorts on, you've got jeans on. Um, I don't see any rucksacks between you, or packs between you. I said, to be honest with you, you've got an hour's worth of light left. What you need to be doing is going back into Coniston. I take it that's where you've come from, Coniston. Yes, it is. Right, okay. Yeah, it will take you about an hour to get down onto this road. So I would really recommend that you spend that hour wisely and, and get off here and, and go down. They uh, Today, they should have gone and done... Today being Saturday, by the way, they should have gone and done Scarfell. And they were looking for the corridor route. Now, I don't know if you know the corridor route in Scarfell, but again, it's one of those... There's a few... It can be a bit hairy at points. It's not... It's not that difficult, but it is hairy. And, you know, sometimes you put yourself in a position that if you do trip before, you could seriously hurt yourself. So, I'm not quite sure those are the people that should be doing that. They were trying to climb Coniston in a pair of shorts, um, jean shorts and a pair of jeans. They did have boots on at least. It wasn't like trainers like I'd seen in winter. But it was quite worrying to see that. And anyway, they, they left me to my dinner uh, and they promptly walked back to their campsite in Coniston. Uh, it was quite, not shocking because you see quite a lot of it, but quite uneasy to think that they'd walk to this knoll. There was no, there was no way off the knoll. You've got to go back the way you came. If you keep walking, you fall off a cliff. And you'll see the cliff later on when I'm below it filming back up to it so yeah not not a good situation for those guys I, I I guess they got back safely I guess they got back into Coniston okay um, and hopefully they never actually tried to do Coniston old man 14 minutes before it got dark so it's a bit a bit unnerving what people can put themselves under or situations they could potentially find themselves in hmm. just thought I'd share that with you I'll carry on editing now. Well, I must admit, that's a bit of a drama for me now. I went to sleep almost instantly. Um, I lied down for five minutes and bang, gone. Unfortunately, it's now half past twelve. <clears throat> and this must have been around about eight o'clock. I don't normally have much more than five hours sleep per day anyway. So I'm wide awake now. <laughs> it's, it's 12 o'clock. I normally go to bed at 12 o'clock. I don't normally get up at 12 o'clock. So I'm pretty screwed. Because I'm not going anywhere off this hill for, until it's light. Because I'm not going to. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's quite an interesting turnout. So what can we do to entertain ourselves? Well, earlier on this evening, I was planning on doing something for Pike, Pikers TV. So, being it just gone 12, I guess that would be a good time to do it now. Now, what am I talking about? Well, let me find my mobile phone and I'll explain a little bit more. Where's my Dutch Courage? There, there you go. Dutch Courage, not your own. Let's see what sounds we can pick up. Paratech loaded. Started scanning. Big. Big. King. King of the hill? Dives. Big King dives. If it says 
copper mines, then I'm turning this off. Yes. Well, yes, it was the copper mines. Render. Engine. Okay, copper mines, engines, lots of Idiot. them. Are... Idiot, yes. <laughs> Is that referring to me? Yeti. No, there's no Yetis up here. Yes, a kiss. Thank you very much. One more. Feel. Sighty. Liam. Oh, hello, Liam. Intermittent. Yes, it is, and I think we'll end it there. Scanning stopped. So there you go. <laughs> that was for you, Phil, from Pikers, Bike Pikers TV. I found that app that you got on your phone, and I thought, got to do that. Got to give it a go above the copper mines. Um, so there you are. But... Yeah, I didn't really want to do it. I was feeling a bit scared, really. <laughs> uh, not that I believe in such things, but um, there you go. I had a go with it. There you go. Who, who else is going to do that, eh? Get your little power tech scanner out and see if you can pick up anybody. Oh, this thing, by the way, is just a uh, glow stick. I just leave it attached. So, there's ambient light throughout the evening. So should I wake up in the middle of the night, I can just see, just a little bit of background light, I can just see what's going on, where my head torches and everything. <sighs> so now... Any ideas? Oh, tent, let's have a look, let's talk about the tent, shall we? What do I think? Um, Do you know what? I, I, it's it's flaming warm in here. I know that, and it was cold last night. I mean, when I was driving to work this morning, it was uh, three degrees. And one of the lads who live at T Bay, uh, he was saying it's zero at T Bay this morning. So there you go. Um, I'm I'm a good few hundred meters up here, and I feel very warm inside this tent. I don't have any issues. I decided to bring my mesh half in here as opposed to my ground sheet because I thought it might be a bit blowy and I thought uh, there could be midges where I pitch I didn't know where I was going to end up pitching so I went for the uh, bug option as opposed to the open ground sheet option and I'm pleased I did that that definitely paid off because I was unable to get uh, a perfect pitch for the tent the area that I'm in uh, one of the sides is, is flat as opposed to uh, pitched like a teepee so it's all I could do with the room that I had, so that's that's why it is the way it is. But it it's paid off, and uh, well, quite clearly I I rocked to sleep and just that was it, gone, gone. Uh, but because it's set up that way, it is a bit flappy, and uh, so when the wind does blow, it really does flap about a bit. So it's not perfect, but but it works. And if it was to rain heavily. I would be absolutely fine in this tent. No issues whatsoever. So I'm quite pleased about it. Yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying it. Like that. See how, see the noise? It's quite flappy. And, that, and that's not because it's a poorly designed tent. It, it genuinely is down to the fact that I can't set it up exactly the way it should be. Excellent ventilation in this tent. There is not a drop of moisture on this fly at all. No condensation, no nothing. So I'm really, really impressed with that. But um, I'm sure it should be really for the money I've paid. 
Uh, yeah. I don't really know what else to do. I can't show you anything else. What time is it now? It's ten to one. I'm totally wide awake. <laughs> That's what happens when you spend ten years getting up early and driving at least 65 miles in the morning and 65 miles home every night. You, your body becomes accustomed to getting up early and doing what it's got to do. And uh, my, my body clock's just said, well, you've had your five hours or four hours kip now, up you get. Time to go. Even when I'm not working, it happens. I can't. It takes a week for me to get out of sync just as I start to relax. It's time to go back to work again. Morning. Yeah, it was uh, a relatively okay night. There was a lump under my back, so it was. It ended up being quite uh, annoying. But there you go. Um, the the horrors of ground dwelling, I'm afraid. It's nothing like hammocking, is it? But yeah, time to have breakfast. I'm having some bacon toasties this morning. Uh, coffee. Pack my kit and walk down to the car, and once I've got down to the car, um, work. <laughs> Gonna call into work. We're at a certain stage of handing over a particular part of the job, and so uh, all hands to the pump, and we all help each other out. So that's what I'm doing. Can nip in, make sure if my services are needed, I can help out. If not, I can do an hour or two, catch up on a bit of paperwork, and go home. Uh, and that's my day mapped out for me. There we are, bacon and cheese toasty with melted cheese now on the inside. Mmm. Not forget my coffee. Here we go, this <clears throat> is the reason I got this tent. I have all the room in the world. I can pack everything away inside this tent and the only thing I can leave up still is the fly outside. Bags of admin room. It's pour, well it's not pouring down but it's raining relatively heavily now. It's just perfect. This is why I bought this tent, so is that when the weather does turn, I can still do all my admin, still get things packed away, still cook, still eat, with all the room in the world. Not messing around with a little tiny porch, not messing around cooped up. I've got, I can take this in and down now, just drop it down, and I can work back here. Loads of room. Loads of room. Stood up to the gust last night, stood up to the gust this morning. Yeah, I am very, very happy with this. Very happy. Which is unusual, because I don't get much happy about much, really. <laughs> so I've had my breakfast, I've got my coffee going. I'll start a nice steady pack up. Get everything in. Get down this hill, and gone. And there we are. I don't care. If it's raining, I get wet on the way down, on the way back to the car. Even though it's a good, what, four miles, must be four miles away the car, I don't, I don't mind. Because I'm heading in the right direction. I've got dry clothing when I get to the car, so it's not, not a drama for me. So, heading in the right way. Yeah. Well, there we go. Clean, tidy, no mess. No problems. Just as it should be. And a little bit of a better look at my bedroom last night. Quite amazing, wouldn't you say? Quite amazing. It's what it's all about. You gotta get your ass out and enjoy the countryside while you can. We're fortunate we can get out and do it. Some people can't. So make the most of it. I do.
Well, up there, that's the grassy knoll where I slept last night, overlooking my kingdom. This is the still working mines over there, not copper mines, after slate and stuff. Because obviously slate kitchens and all that have really come trendy recently. So there you go. It's pouring down with rain, I'm going to have to get my camera away. But press pause and you can have a good look at this picture. Don't be fooled by what you see sometimes around the copper mines. A lot of the stuff you actually see here isn't genuine. And what we're looking at here is up here along here, see this stone wall here. I know for a fact that that is where the women and children used to break rocks and there's some big slabs up there, big stones. And they would break rocks on that and they would wash it down into the sluices here. And that's where the copper ore was separated from the rock. So it was broken up along here by women and children, washed down into the sluices, into the holding tanks down here, and they're separated from the stone and the rock. And that's what all this is. So a lot of the stuff that you see in and around this place is just put there by the owner to make it look more authentic. And it's not genuine stuff, it's complete and utter crap. Here's one of the sluice holes. And this house is actually built, or the youth hostel, is actually built in one of the separating bent pens. That's why it's still full of water. It's now a youth hostel. Those uh, pictures aren't quite right, but it's sort of an idea. They've still got the youth hostel there. That's not how it was. <laughs> Second look at my grassy knoll, home for the night. I could see that bridge and those cottages from where I were. So, last night, up there. Now I'm full of little true stories and this is another one. We came here tabbing my mate and I one year and the weather was horrendous. And we couldn't move forward, didn't really want to go back. We're not far from the town but, and we slept on this bridge. We bivvied up on this bridge. We tied our bivvies to the railings and we slept down on the floor. And that's a true story, we slept on the bridge. First time I've ever done that. Um, one thing you might not know, this river has extraction rights on it. And basically what that means is for people to mine it and, and to ex extract uh, the ores and whatnots from the river, you had to apply for a license. But once the license is permitted, pretty much anyone can sign for the same license, can sign up for it. So to that end, a friend of mine called George, I met him 10 years ago when I was doing another job um, up in the Lake District. And uh, Hydro George, I call him, because I can't remember his last name. And more importantly, what he did was build his own mini hydro station for his retirement. George was a quarryman. He quarried all his life. He still quarried 10 years ago when I last met him and I'm sure he's still quarrying today, but he built his own hydro station. We should pass it in a minute, and I'll show it to you. And I think it makes him about £100,000 a year. Now that ain't bad, is it? Free energy. Just, so just remember, if you've got a river running through you and it's been once granted a uh, extraction license, you too can apply for the same license, because once it's given, it's open.
but more importantly, we appear to have a carper in our mists. Morning carper. <laughs> That's a chub. Yes, I totally agree with that sign. We we'll continue our walk now along the side of the road. There's no other way back to the car. I've got to go this way. Unless I want to go back over the top of the mountain. And no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> but despite that, it's still a nice walk. Whichever way you look at it. Tremendous walk, actually. I've only done it once before, this bit. And that was with Jules and Ian. And that was a good tab that day, too. Nice. Now, here's a thing I've seen a few times. And can anybody tell me what the purpose of that is? What does it do? Is it supposed to bring you luck or something? Why hammer coins into a tree? This is my final checkpoint. I know my car is up the end of this road. So... It's pronounced Tilbethet. You don't pronounce a W, believe it or not. So a Graithwaite is Graithwaite. And that's how it works. You just tries pronouncing it though. So I leave the footpath now. And I stay on the road all the way to the car. It's a bit of a poor way. It's a bit of a... It's a bit of a... Pooey way to finish the walk. But at the end of the day, it's been a good walk. And I'll put the final distances and heights, etc at the end of the video just got to get up this bloody hill <laughs> last hill of the day it's not a big hill them lambs are silent aren't they And them two look positively comfortable. Can you hear the lambs, Clarice? Nope, because they're quiet. You right, dude? Chilling out? You mind not shitting all over the road? Old mine workings again. This is a, a smaller version of what we looked at previously with the rock breaking and separation. The difference here is that they're using industrial hammers to break the rocks into the sediments. Sediment falls out and then separated here. You've still got the rock breaking going on but obviously that would be done back here. And there you go. So. It's a great place for your history. And there she is. So, that is called Tilberthut Gill. Not till with weight. Well, there we go. That's that walk done. Uh, I really enjoyed it.
it was hard work coming up that road. I was feeling a bit tired, but there you go. I'm not the fittest person in the world by any means. So, uh, but I think that wasn't too much to do in one time. You know, I think that was a good walk. Conclusions about my tent. I think I've fallen in love with it. I couldn't pitch it right last night. I was on a hump, so my back suffered a little bit, even with my super duper comfy bed. I was warm as toast. I was dry. So despite me not being able to pitch it properly, I still got my sleep. I still got my exercise. I packed up in the rain. All my gear was inside. And I just jumped out, pulled the pegs, pulled the fly, put it in a bag and I was gone. It's a fantastic system and I do like it. And being out and trying it like that has paid off. So I've got confidence in it now. I'd like to set it on a flat ground and see how it performs in the, in the wind. It was a bit flappy, but I did say last night that it, was, it wasn't right. The, I couldn't get all five uh, pegs in properly. I had to have a flat end, but uh, it still worked and it still worked a treat. So, believe it or not, it's time for me to go to work now. I'm, uh, I'm going to drive over to work and see if everything's all right and see if I can help out anywhere. And if not, I'm going to go home. Just one final thing. I brought two and a half litres of water with me. Was it enough? That's all I got left of two and a half litres. It was absolutely bang on. So yeah, don't underestimate how much water you do need. <laughs>